Hey, what's up, guys? This is Ricky Bonfire back with another amazing tutorial. And this time I want to share with you how you can take your favorite logo. So maybe it is Nike, Adidas, Converse, whatever you like, maybe even your own logo. All right. Just put it into Cinema 4D 2023's Cloth Engine and achieve something amazing like this one. So let's just make a short breakdown how to build that stuff. Just be sure, as always, there will be more on my Patreon. There will be a project file. There will be a longer project breakdown. Plus, there will be some bonus lesson about how to achieve some shader like this one so if you want to build something like satin silk or even something crazy like this my patreon is the right place in addition this month this is really crazy you will get a modular building kit to create something awesome like this one right now if you subscribe this month to my patreon you will get 100 discount on this kit to create these amazing graphics and of course there will be also a tutorial on how to build these ones and how to use the kit all right so this will be super amazing and i'm really Really excited about it if you want to become a patreon this month you will get all of the good stuff in the tutorial nights tier if you don't want to become a patreon you can still support me on youtube so ring the bell do the good stuff write a comment subscribe like the video that would be just amazing in addition you can go to my gumroad shop it's marcusgonzagumroad.com to download some free wallpapers and other good stuff and Last but not least, you can follow and support me on Instagram. It's Marcus Gonza 3 d And now we are through the mandatory stuff and let's just dive into Cinema 4D and have some fun. Finally in Cinema 4D and what looks here like your typical gray white of the viewport is basically an already cached cloth simulation. So you can see I can scrub through the timeline and you can see how the logo is animating back in the Z depth. So it is getting smaller. It will collide with the cloth and then basically it will be like completely disappearing appearing into this cloth void but when you play it backwards it would be spit out so for example you could make a nice ping pong animation for instagram and just get a lot of followers and likes on it so if this is your goal here anyway let's build this one from scratch you could just go to your web browser and search for a sports brand logo for example and search for an illustrator file or just a vector file just drag and drop it into cinema 4d since a couple of releases cinema is capable of accepting illustrator files then then just select the logo that you like and then I will just put it into a new scene. This is the logo. It's just a spline which I put into an extrude object. So it will look like this. I will just give it a slight beveling here because nothing is as sharp as this one in the real world. So I will just bevel it a little bit so it will look like this. I already put a collider tag on it. When you just right click go to simulation text then you will find the collider tag and if you are like me you could use this one and just put it into your layout all right in addition i built a collider shape here so you can see it's this one and more or less i just put it into the same position i'm not super exact here because i want to go fast all right but you can see it's basically just a smooth spline around this one which i also want to use as a collider and when you press f4 to see it from the front then you can see that this one is going smoothly around it and just make it a little bit more soft so i wanted to get rid of this shape sharp angle here and just made it a bit bigger. Um, it depends on your logo if this is necessary, but you can do that when you go to the spline pen here and just go around your object like this one. Of course, you will be more precise, but then just switch it to a B spline. You can press M1 for the magnet tool and then you could just massage it into position. All right. So this is how you can draw smooth splines. Let's activate this once again. Both of these elements, I will use them as a collider and because I want to move them both as one object I will just select both of them and click on the null object to put them into a null hierarchy and I will call this one move so I can move this one as one piece all right as I said maybe this extra collider is not necessary for you this depends just on the logo that you will use and the shape if you have a lot of really hard angles so maybe this is necessary all right so we have a collider but we need something that this can collide with let's just put a plane into the scene let's click on plus Z and for example just put it behind it somewhere around here and 4 by 4 meter is kind of okay. I just think I need to have this a little bit bigger. I don't know. For now, I just put it to 6 by 5 meters. And just be sure that these sizes here are not totally out of the world because um, these simulations are based on real life physics. And it's just a good idea to keep these values reasonable. So this could be like a huge blanket, but I wouldn't consider to animate something in this size, like 600 meters. Just try to be in something around this. 
this one. All right, let's get rid of the figure. And I think the plane could use some more segments. So for example, I put this one to 60 by 50 to have all of these ones as little tiny squares. All right, or not so tiny, but for the start, this is okay for the simulation. So now let's put a cloth tag onto it. Let's press Control D to go to the world settings and just be sure that gravity is zero. So now let's simulate this one and you can see basically nothing is happening. It's the most boring cloth simulation that you even can think of. I think it's a good idea to go to simulation forces and let's just also put this one into the window here. And you have seen this one multiple times. Let's just quickly do it. When you put a turbulence into the scene, then your cloth will react like cloth basically. So just increase the strength and you can see turbulence is kicking in and this is funny and lovely, but it can be improved. Okay, for now, let's switch off the turbulence. And I think what I want to start with would be to maybe just animate this already. So I will just click on it, go to frame zero, create a keyframe on the position set. And then I will go to 120, for example, and let's just move it back like this one, for example, 80. All right, let's just double check it. A bit underwhelming, I have to say this. All right, of course, this is heavily dependent on the resolution. So for example, when you double these values, then you will get more of the wrinkles. But now you can already see a little issue here that I also had with this logo. This is kind of crazy. And I think it is because of the collider on our logo here. When I get rid of the collider, you can see that we don't have this issue anymore. I will show you on my Patreon how you can basically get rid of this issue. But for now, let's just kill the collider lighter on it and uh, let's not make a big deal out of it but let's just see how we can improve this even more i think one part of the effect is of course the collision here but i also want to make this one an attractor for the cloth all right so in the patreon part i will go into the field force and set this one up this is more complex and way better way more professional i would say it's more versatile you can do all kinds of cool stuff with it but for now you can also just use an attractor to keep it really simple Let's put the tractor more or less into the middle of your logo and put it into the move object. All right, let's just see what will happen now. Okay, and you can already see that the cloth is directly attracted towards the attractor, which will move with the logo, or you get an additional attraction and a collision. All right, it's getting more and more interesting, but I think I want to switch this one to a force mode and maybe I'm not really sure about this one. I don't use this one so often. So let's put it to five and 200 all right it looks kind of okay let me try 10 to make the attraction stronger all right i kind of like it it's kind of okay so it's not overwhelming but it's a good start here let's also in addition put a rotation into the mix and as i said you can set all of the stuff the attraction the rotation everything up with a single field force but for now to keep it simple i will just use a rotation here and let's just see what happens when i put this one to five the effect is way too strong, so I would just put it to one, for example. I mean, it's okay for now. I think the cloth definitely needs to have a different setting here. So let's go to the cloth tag here. And you definitely need more bendiness, maybe 500 and a lot of stretchiness. So I just want to give it more wrinkles and make it more interesting. Now you can see these sharp angles here. You can get rid of it by going to the font tag. Put this one, for example, to 180 NA to get out of the lines mode. And you can see that we get some okay shading for now later you can still put this one to a subdivision surface put this to one by one for example put it into it and now this is really smooth and clean for now let's deactivate it and what i don't like is that it looks like they all going to the attractor here they are penetrating through our geometry through the collider and <laughs> we get like this black hole here this black hole effect mm, let's think about it or maybe i need to just move it a bit more towards the front and you could also i guess give it something like a spherical field all right let's do it like this put this one to 500 for example or 300 all right and i guess now the effect will be inside of the sphere but i guess you could also go to invert it now it should be that the effect is everywhere 100 of the attractor but inside of the sphere it will get uh, zero effect so i think this will help us from this black hole effect where everything is going into the center point we have a really strong effect here 
towards this point. We don't have the exploding polygons. I just think the attractor is a bit too strong. So let's just put this one to five. Let's see it one more time. Of course, you can spend way more time and make it way more beautiful. I think it's a good idea to just set up a camera here, look through it, just put it everywhere to zero and go back. Maybe give it some other focal length, something like this. All right, let's go back to zero. I just want to frame this one, something like this. Maybe put a gray on it, double the segments one more time. Let's play this back one more time. And now you can see you get all of these beautiful wrinkles. We have some collision issues here and there. And overall, I'm just missing a little bit of the of the turbulence and the difference in the folds. At a certain point, you will go to the cushing and just cush it to have a real-time playback. But for now, I think it's okay when I will just go through the timeline here. You can see that we get a little issue here with the attractor. Maybe you have to keyframe it down or you have to be a little bit more advanced to use a field force. But I think in that case, when you use a simple setup like this one, you could also now just animate this effect down from five to zero, for example, and get rid of this pin that will happen now. All right, so this is really a strong effect. Let's not just talk about it. So I will just show you. So we could make a keyframe here for five and maybe already here, I will just get rid of it. Put this one to zero. Let's play back it one more time. And you can see we get the attraction, but then the attraction is not there anymore. There will be just some inertia, some force that will just keep on carrying here to the center but basically there would be no more attraction of it. All right, so I just changed some parameters here. So I reduced the bendiness and the stretchiness just a little bit from 500 to 100 to make it not too crazy rubbery and uh, make it just a bit more stiff. And then I went to the attractor and keyframed it from five to zero already at this point. So at frame 22 until 32, I will reduce it to zero. And then I put this one into a subdivision surface all right and then i went into the cloth tag cash and cash this one all right and this is the result that i achieved with it okay so i think it's also interesting it's a bit different than my example that i just showed you here this is just a bit more subtle and tasteful all right the timing is better i would say but still this is a good start here all right so you can tweak the settings however you like to achieve something amazing it will just take some time to adjust it some keyframing. What I showed you here on YouTube are basically the essentials to build this one. But if you want to put it to the next level, maybe you could use the feed forces. That's what I will do in the long version. But yeah, I just wanted to show you, you can think about this collision, this attraction, the rotation, maybe mix in some turbulence and make it your own. So I hope that you learned something here. As you already know, on Patreon will be a long version of this one, where we also go into the making it beautiful part and uh, just put it to the next level. All right. Hopefully you learned something cool today. Thank you so much for your time. See you in the next tutorial. Bye everyone.